So the latest 40 series graphics cards have brought a whole host of problems with them. And if we leave the pricing, the 12 volt type R connector setting cards on fire and not been able to close the side panel on your case aside for the moment and deal with the issue of GPU sag. These cards being bigger, they are going to sag and a lot of manufacturers are now shipping these little brackets with them or some variation of them to help support your graphics card. And in fact, it's rare to find one of these cards that doesn't come without a bracket like this. The big problem with these brackets is they don't look very good and I'm not a big fan of adding them into the build because I do think they detract from it. But it is a very real problem that we need to have a solution for. So the guys over at OCPC, I think they have the solution for this. And this is a really good GPU support bracket with some RGB bling on it. So it should hopefully give you more frames per second given that it's got some RGB on it. They've gone a step further and they've added some cooling fans into the bracket with the aim of helping cool your graphics card as well as supporting it at the same time. It's available in both black and white and has an MSRP of $39.99. Okay, so let's go ahead and get it unboxed and take a closer look at it. So this is the Pull P1 GPU support bracket. As you can see, it comes with two 80 millimeters fans, which run between 800 and 2500 revs per minute. They have an airflow of 34.2 CFM, a static pressure of 0.93 millimeters of water, and operate at less than 28 decibels of noise. If we turn it round, you'll notice we've got the OCPC logo on the side, and this does light up. It has some RGB effects on it. Uh, turn it round again, you'll notice that we've got the little pads here for supporting the GPU and this will support up to two GPUs and that's when the reason we've got two support brackets here. So all you need to do is loosen the thumb screw, then we're going to slide the bracket down, we're going to bring it up to whatever position it supports the GPU in and then tighten things up to hold the pad in place. And we've got some nice protection here so it shouldn't hopefully not scratch your graphics card. If you do want to only go with one GPU, you can put your GPU here and lower the other one down on top of it before putting it into place. And again, that's going to look reasonably tidy. The other option that you do have, I think, is you can probably remove this little pad. So I lose, remove the thumb screw and then we can slide this up to the top and remove it. So we've only got the one pad if we're going for one GPU. In terms of the cables coming from the fan, it's good to see we've got a four pin fan connector here. So we're going to be able to run the fans in PWM mode. And as you'd expect, we've got a 3-pin 5-volt ARGB connector for the logo on the front of the support bracket. What's really good to see is we've got this additional header here, so you're going to be able to daisy-chain another device into place, and you're not sacrificing an ARGB header on your motherboard by adding this in. It's also good to see the cables are nice and long at around about 50 centimetres in length, so you shouldn't have any problem reaching them even to the furthest headers on your motherboard. So in terms of installing the GPU support bracket, it should just be a matter of setting it into place at the side of the graphics card. And you'll notice it's actually magnetically attached. So when I set it down there, it's attaching itself to the base of the case and hold it quite nicely in place. It's not that strong an attachment, but definitely enough to stop it sliding around over the place. What we then can do is bring this up to where it is supporting our GPU and simply tighten things up. We've got our cables here, so I'm just going to pass them through to the back of the case and get them connected up. Okay, so that's everything part on. As you can see, we're doing a good job of supporting the graphics card, and I think the RGB logo on the front of the support bracket actually looks quite attractive. So you can see our 280mm fans should be directing cooler in from the front of the case through the graphics card, hopefully cooling it down. And as well, in terms of noise levels, I can't actually notice any additional noise since I've added this into the system, so that's a good first sign. So I definitely think the Pull P1 GPU support bracket is well made and I think it's quite an attractive design. But the next thing to look at is does it actually improve the temperatures of our graphics card? Because that's obviously its big selling point. So the first test I did was a 10 minute Ida64 stability test with all components in the system being stressed. So we've got our 4070 Ti here. All the fans in the system are running on the standard motherboard fan curves reacting to the CPU temperature including the fans in the Pole P1. There's no way for me to adjust them to run off the GPU temperatures using the motherboard fan curves themselves. But during the Ida64 stability test, there's a maximum stress placed on the GPU and CPU at exactly the same time. So it should work fairly well in terms of testing purposes. So take a look at the temperatures. I've got three different sensors in the GPU, and I was able to test these both with and without the GPU support brackets. So when I added in the GPU support bracket, both our GPU and our GPU hotspot temperature both went up by one degree, whereas our GPU memory temperature went up by two degrees. 
There was absolutely no difference to our CPU temperatures. However, there was a good reduction in some of the temperatures of our other components in the system, with our motherboard temperature going down by 5 degrees and our M.2 SSD temperature going down by 2 degrees. So following our IDA64 stability test, I let the PC idle for 5 minutes to see what the lowest temperature all the components would get down to, both with and without the support bracket. And if you're familiar with the 30 and 40 series NVIDIA cards, they have a zero fan mode. So the fan did spin up for the first really few seconds of that idle, got the card down to a nice low temperature, and then for the majority of that test, the fans on the GPU weren't spinning. So it'll be really interesting to see the extra fans at the front of the graphics card, whether that improved the temperatures. So this time we did see a benefit to all the components in the system. Our GPU temperatures came down by two degrees, the GPU hotspot by one degree, and our GPU memory down by 4 degrees. The other components in the system also came down with our CPU coming down by 1 degree, our motherboard temperature by 5 degrees, and our M.2 SSD temperature by 2 degrees. So the Pol P1 does seem to improve the temperatures of everything in the system whenever the fans and the graphics card aren't spinning, because in general the graphics card is still producing heat, and that heat is transferred to the other components. So what I was keen to do is if we put the fans to just 40% following that five minutes of idle with the fans not spinning, what would be the lowest temperatures and would the Pole P1 make any difference if you had the fans in the graphic card spinning during idle? So taking a look at the temperatures with our Pole P1 installed, really the only difference was our GPU hotspot was one degree hotter. And looking at the other components in the system, there was no difference to our CPU temperature, although our motherboard was three degrees cooler, and our M.2 SSD 1 degree cooler with the Pole P1 installed. The final thing to take a look at is the noise levels, and these were really good. The Pole P1 only added one decibel of extra noise during two of the tests, and didn't make any difference to the noise levels during one. So summing up these results, starting off with the noise levels, these are absolutely excellent. What I found, particularly adding smaller fans into a build in the past, has been a bad idea, because they run quite noisy when they're particularly at high revs per minute. This isn't the case with these fans, they seem fairly good and adding it into your system isn't going to significantly increase your noise levels. In terms of the temperatures, these are a little bit more disappointing from the GPU point of view, because really the only place we notice the temperatures coming down significantly is when the fans in the GPU aren't spinning. And at these levels, the GPU temperatures are well away from worrying levels, so actually bringing them down by a few degrees doesn't really offer you any significant benefit. And actually where we really wanted the GPU temperatures to improve would be uh, during a stress test. So one important disclaimer to give is these are the temperature results I've got with the Pole P1 in this particular system using this particular hardware. And in a different system with different hardware, you might actually find a benefit to the temperatures, particularly if you were to run a different graphics card or have the graphics card in a slightly different position. With this particular motherboard, the graphics card sits one slot lower than it will in most motherboards. So having it a little bit higher up you might find different results. So this brings me on to, should you get yourself the Pole P1? Well, I think it largely depends on whether you like the aesthetics of it. If you like the aesthetics, it's gonna look well in your system, it's gonna do a great job of supporting your GPU, and it's not gonna add an awful lot of noise in. And there may or may not be some temperature benefits to it, depending on how your system is set up. If you don't like the aesthetics of it, it's easy, stay away from it. For me personally, I think it's a little bit big and bulky for my personal like. Um, it extends too far above the graphics card, and I think it's generally made for dual graphics cards. I think what would look much better would be a single graphics card support bracket, so there was maybe just one fan, and it didn't extend so far above the graphics card. Although it is important to mention, this graphics card is one slot lower than it will be in most systems. So the graphics card would still be coming up to here in most systems. And in that particular position, there's still a significant amount of the support bracket extending up above the GPU. And for me, if I was gonna to want to support my graphics card, this little bracket that comes with the graphics card looks slightly cleaner than this large bracket given the fact that the larger bracket in this particular system doesn't seem to do an awful lot in terms of temperatures. But like I said, if you do like the aesthetics of it, and I do think it is attractive with the RGB on the front of it, you'd be perfectly fine to get it because it does a good job of supporting your GPU. If you are interested in picking up the Pole P1, I'll put a link to it in the description so you'll be able to find out where to get it. 
If you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you're not currently subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.